the, uh, the Lord spoke this to me also when we were, those songs about in his presence and his love. He said, he's not concerned about your performance. You will never be able to perform to get the blessings of God. He said, it's your presence. Wow. He'd rather have your presence to have you decide if your performance is good enough. Because see, our performance is never good enough. But what he's looking for is our presence. I can't imagine what happened that day in the Garden of Eden when we don't know how long God did this, but it says in the cool of the evening, he went to earth and he walked with Adam and Eve. Wow. You know, we sing that, we love your presence, but I believe God's echoing that back to us. Amen. He said, I love your presence. I'm not looking for your performance. I'm looking for your presence. He just wants to be with us. That's it. That's because you know what? It takes faith for us to be with God and to realize that God is present wherever two or three are gathered. He said, I will be there in the midst of you. So God is pleased today, not with our performance, but he's pleased with our presence. Yes. And that day when he came to earth and he had to make this statement, Adam, where are you? He wasn't concerned about what Adam was doing. He was worried about where's, where's your presence? Where are you? Hallelujah. I'm glad to be in the house of God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hey, we've been in 20 hours of teaching. Someone asked me, what did you learn? And, uh, well, I learned there's probably 5,000 scriptures that he, he turned to. Did everybody get to Isaiah 48? We never got there, Pastor. <laughs> we, we, I kept waiting. What verse? But we never got to Isaiah 48. <laughs> Amen. Open your Bibles, if you would, to Luke 4. I'm not going to keep you long. Amen. Thank you, Lord. But the one word that I got from 20 hours, <laughs> 20 hours of, of being under this dynamic, anointed man of God who is addicted to the Word of God. Yeah. The man's on drugs. <laughs> He's addicted to the Word of God. And for me to, me to try to write down everything that we did, but the one thing I got that I felt like the Lord wanted to share this morning, listen to me, three, ver three words, it is written. Luke chapter four, Jesus has been baptized in the Jordan by the John the Baptist and Baptism is a picture of a prerequisite for going forth and going out into ministry. So Jesus was baptized, and then guess where he went? To the wilderness. Forty days and forty nights, full of the Holy Spirit, he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Did not eat nor drink for 40 days. It says at the end of 40 days, guess what? He hungry. <laughs> he, he, I, want, I want something to eat. The, the devil always comes to you when you have a desire. And the devil came to him, knew he was hungry, knew he wanted something. And he said, turn these stones into bread. Satan knew that Jesus was all man. See, Jesus and the devil were in heaven together. Satan worshiped Jesus in heaven, but he worshiped him as God. He knew Jesus was a man. So he's going to tempt him with man hungers. And he said, you hungry, Jesus? Pick up these stones, turn them into bread. 
Jesus says, it is written. What I want to get through today is that whatever the devil comes to you, I want you to be able to say, it is written. Now, to say it is written, there has to be a a demarcation, and and I'm going to use Nicodemus, Nicodemus in Acts, uh, John chapter 3. Nicodemus was all man, all religion, uh, knew everything. And he came to Jesus by night because he didn't didn't want anybody to see him doing that. And he said, uh, I'm on one side of this fence and I realize you're on the other side. And I realize that there's a line and uh, because no one can do what you're doing and, and I'm here. And so Jesus, who is on this side of the line spiritually, and so Jesus said, Nicodemus, you must be born again. Right. Nicodemus is in the natural and he says, how do I do that? Do I go back into my mama's womb? You can't get more fleshly than that. Nicodemus, you got to cross that line. You got to step out, step in two, and step up. Are you seeing what I'm saying? So, in all of our lives, and I'm going to say most of us here today, I would pray that all of us here today have stepped over. Because if we're still trying to understand God in our natural ability, it ain't never going to work. You're, you're called a religious folk. See, there's a lot of people that are very religious like Nicodemus was. But Jesus said, Nicodemus, you've got to step over that line. You've got to be born again so that you can see the things of the kingdom and that you might enter into the things of the kingdom. See, we, we, we that have stepped over, we can see and we can hear and we can understand the things of the kingdom. Now, it's over here that we can say legally, everybody say legally. Legally. See, if you don't do something legally, it ain't right. So everything we do in the kingdom has got to be legal according to the book. And so when something happens over here, okay, let me go back. If I'm still over here and something happens, I'm going to deal with it the way I think it ought to be dealt with. But if I'm over here, I have the right to say, it's in the book. Amen. It is written. That's right. Are oh, you understand that? So we, so we, we got to <laughs> step over. Amen. Amen. So two more times, Satan, that didn't, that didn't work. And so then he says, um, uh, He took him to a high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and said, I'm going to give you all the kingdoms of the world. See, he's talking to a man. He's not talking to God. I'm going to give you all the kingdoms that there are. And Jesus said, it is written. Then he comes to the third time and he tempts him. He tempts him, throw yourself down from this high mountain. And uh, the the word says, see, the devil knows the word. The word says, you, you won't dash your foot against the stone. Everything will be cool. And Jesus says, it is written. Is that me doing that? I'm sorry. It is written. Amen? Amen. The wilderness was preparing Jesus, man Jesus, for ministry. Satan tempted Jesus as a man because he knew he couldn't tempt him as God. So I want everybody to leave here today and you're, you're going to be able to say it is written. Amen. When the money is not there, it is written. Where is it written? Philippians 4, 19. My God shall supply all my needs according to it is written. Now see, if you're, if, you're, if you're over here, you have a right to, to say that. If you're a giver, you give gifts, tithes, offerings, you give alms, uh, what, whatever it is, when you get, you have a right, you have a legal right to say, it is written. 
my God shall provide for me. Come on now, how many know that? Amen. Okay, now the word has got to be revelation to you in order to say that. You just can't be saying, well, nab it and glab it. Come on. See, we're not talking about that. We're talking about, we're talking, we're talking about the authority full of the Holy Spirit to be able to stand against when the money's not there to say, "Uh uh-huh, but it is written, my God shall provide. Come on now. Amen. You have a legal right to that statement. Jesus gave us that legal, legal right to say, it is written. Amen. So when the money's not there. When you are told you can't do something, either at work, wherever, you can't do it, you don't have the education, you don't have the money, you don't have the welfare, someone tells you you can't do something, all you got to do is say, remember now I'm over here, I have a legal right to say I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Well, but you don't have the education. Listen to me, Bubba. Come on now, it is written. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen? Amen. See, I'm legally doing something. I'm not trying to do something illegal. I'm doing it legally because it is written in the Word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Isaiah 53, 4 and 5 and 1 Peter 2, 24. The doctor has given you a bad report. No one likes a bad report. If I'm with Nicodemus, I'm going to receive it. But I have a legal right to say, by his stripes, I am healed. Isaiah 700 years before, 700 years later, Peter says, by his stripes, I am healed. I'm not waiting to be healed. I am healed. Come on now. See, but I got to be on this side. I got to step into this rhema revelationary word to have a legal right. I can legally say that. By his stripes, he was bruised for my iniquities. He was crushed 700 years before the cross. 700 years by his stripes, I am healed. Hallelujah. 700 years later, by his stripes, I am healed. I have a legal right. I have a legal right to declare that. Amen? Amen. Everybody say, it is written. written. Mark 16. We had, Mary Jean and I had a situation with a young man, uh, an alcoholic spirit had overtaken him. He was convulsing. He was throw, He threw up a puddle of blood this big. And uh, I don't know if I said it, but I meant it. And I said, it is written. I don't know if you heard Brother Tracy said something about praying something that came out of your, your belly. Amen. You, you, it, it didn't just come out of here. It came out of your belly. And I can remember out of my belly, I cursed that demon of alcoholism. Out of my belly, because I knew it was written. I I, I didn't really realize it until Tracy was uh, examining those times but I knew I knew that I knew not just here but I knew here does everybody know everybody got one of these (laughs) because Mark 16 says these are the signs that shall follow them that believe it is written You will cast out devils. You will lay hands on the sick. You will speak with a new tongue. If you drink any deadly thing, 
it will not harm you. And later on it says, and the Lord went with them, working with them. What was he working with them? Confirming the word with signs following. It is written. Thank you, Lord. But see, we gotta, we can't, we can't be, we can't be Nicodemus. We can't be the, let's say, we can't be the old Nicodemus. Old Nicodemus was judged and ruled by reason. The reasons why, the reason, how come, and all that. Amen. What are you doing over there, Pastor Jack? Well, because it's written. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can go where he says I can go. I can do what he says I can do. Mark 11. Who's got a mountain in your life right now? Who's got a mountain that's kind of stopping you from doing anything? Franklin, that's good. Who has got it? Come on, who's got a mountain? Who's got a mountain? There's a mountain. There's a mountain. Who's got a mountain? You got a mountain. You got a mountain. But we're going to speak to that mountain. We're going, to, we're going to talk to that mountain and we're going to say, number one, we're going to say, it is written. Okay. Mark 11 says, if you have a mountain in your life, command it to be picked up and removed and thrown into the sea and doubt not in your heart, but believe that whatsoever things you saith shall come to pass. Well, I'm saying that because it is written that mountains have to be removed. Okay, you're not getting this. Point your finger at that mountain and say, it is written. Whatever your mountain is, I cast you into the sea. I ain't doubting nothing. But I believe that whatsoever things I saith shall come to pass because it is written. Hallelujah. So the next time the devil tempts you with something, which he will, what are you going to say? It is written. When you get a bad report from the doctor. It is written. When you get a bad report on your job or the economy or your car breaks down, what are you going to say? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, we're legal. I'm not trying to do it some other way. We're legal. Before we, before we knew all this, before we knew any of this kind of stuff, we were saved, but we didn't know nothing. I, I did something stupid. Anyway, we got, we got in trouble, and I needed $2,000. Everybody knows what $2,000 is? And this was 40 years ago. That's a lot of money. And, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, we need $2,000. Uh, so I'm with Nicodemus. And uh, her grandmother, uh, Muddy, was her name, had always told us, if you kids ever need any money, just come to me. Oh, Lord, I need, oh, muddy, muddy, muddy. <laughs> so we drive to Matagarda, Texas, and we go down there, and it was kind of embarrassing, but she gave us $2,000. Hallelujah. We came back. Six months later, I need $2,000. Oh, Lord, well, I can't go back to Muddy. And I, I just happened to play golf with a banker, and he was always telling me, Jack, if you ever need anything, come see me, son. And I said, Lord, I need $2,000. Oh, the guy at the bank. So I went to the bank, and I got me $2,000. Six months later, I need $2,000. Dollars. Oh, Lord. Can't go back to Muddy. <laughs> I can't go back to the bank. <laughs> Lord. <laughs> and I heard the Lord, <laughs> he say, I'm so glad we got to this place. 
because there was no place else to go. But he told me, he said, I'm so glad we got to this place. So we didn't do nothing. I didn't go try to figure out where I'm going to get that money. Oh, and we were, we were baby, 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 babies. And somehow, some way, I got $2,000. So sometime, God is trying to get us to that place. But there's no place else to turn. I came home one time. We were, we were making good money in the insurance business, and my checks were usually really in the thousands, four, five, and six, and seven thousand dollars way back. And boy, one month I got a check for four hundred dollars. And it, I got paid on the eighth, and Mary Jean knew when I came home on the eighth, we were going to have some M O N E Y. And so I'm driving home from work with my $400 paycheck. <laughs> and I went to my house and I just kept on driving. <laughs> and I drove around the block once. And then I came back to my house and I kept on driving again. I, I really think I only did it three times. Mighty, I was a mighty man of God. And I go in and of course Mary Jean, hi baby, how you doing? Did we get paid today? I don't know. I remember telling her, boy, God is really going to show up this month. <laughs> uh, we did, but thank you, Lord. We tithed. We paid our house note and the electric bill or something. No, that was a long time ago when you the house note in your Yeah, the house note was 200 and something in utilities. And I'm telling you, it was one of the greatest months we ever had. Now, we, we realized that all that food in the pantry was supposed to be eaten. And Mary Jean became a wonder chef. We, we put stuff together and ate it. It was good. But God provided. Money came in. Crazy, 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 crazy things. My salary doubled after that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It is written. And you know, Tracy did it and we're doing it. You are loved, but not because of your performance, but because of your presence. Amen. Stand to your feet with me. Thank you, Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, re re revival shouldn't wear you out, but it, you do get kind of tired after a revival, 20 hours in, in three days five uh, meetings, and uh, I just commend my son, Jack, and Michelle, and all those people. They were, they were here early, and they were here late, uh, ministering to, to Brother Tracy and, and his staff, and I really, I really appreciate them doing it, and uh, he felt so impressed that uh, we, I think he's already booked for next year to come back and, uh, and do it again. Um, just a good word. You know, again, I didn't get all of it, but I got some of it. Amen. Father, we praise you and we just thank you. Lord, we thank you for your presence. And Father, I just know that you're saying that you appreciate our presence also. For in the presence of God, there's fullness of joy. I praise you and I just thank you today, Lord, for what you're, what you're doing in and through your people I thank you, Father, that you have a word for every person in hearing of my voice, Father. You have a word of healing. You have a word of restoration. Nothing is impossible to them that would believe. So, Father, we praise you and we just thank you that we apply the word. And we say, Lord, it is written. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. No weapon formed against me can prosper no evil, no plague can come nigh my dwelling place. Okay, listen to me. Look at me. We had another mass murder in Dayton, Ohio. Folks, every day you take a breath, you need to be quoting the scripture and say, it is written, no weapon formed against me will prosper, no evil, no plague can come nigh my dwelling place. 
The angels of God watch over me and protect me. I do it every day. Every time I get in the car, I say, thank you, Lord. No weapon formed against me can prosper. Speak the word before you start your day. Speak the word and believe it because you don't know where you're going. We had great prayer last, uh, last evening for El Paso and now for Dayton. What Satan causes for evil, God creates for good. So we just thank God for the good that's going to come out of this. That God's going to show up and show off in these people's lives. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.